Hey guys, how you doing? Marco here from Aviator Life CS. Welcome back to my channel. Today we will start talking about flight controls for the Boeing 737-800 NG. This is a quite extensive system as well. So today is part one of the flight control system, and we will be talking about system limitations, system overview, and controls and indicators. Let's start with system limitations. And remember, we can find this in FCOM Volume 1. It says flight controls, AFM limitations. The maximum altitude with flaps extended is 20,000 feet. Holding in icing conditions with flaps extended is prohibited. In flight, do not extend the speed brake lever beyond the flight detent. Avoid rapid and large alternated control inputs, especially in combination with large changes in pitch, roll, or yaw. Example, large side slip angles as they may result in structural failure at any speed, including below VA. Non-AFM operational information, do not deploy the speed brakes in flight at radio altitudes less than 1,000 feet. Alternate flap duty cycle, when extending or retracting flaps with the alternate flaps position switch, allow 15 seconds after releasing the alternate flaps position switch before moving the switch again to avoid damage to the alternate flap motor clutch. After a complete extend retract cycle, for example, from zero to 15 and back to zero, allow five minutes cooling before attempting another extension. Now let's talk about the system overview. It says the primary flight control system uses conventional control wheel column and pedals linked mechanically to hydraulic power control units, which command the primary flight control surfaces, ailerons, elevators, and rotor. You can see them here. The flight controls are powered by redundant hydraulic sources, system A and system B. Either hydraulic system can operate all primary flight controls. The ailerons and elevators may be operated manually if required. The rudder may be operated by the standby hydraulic system if system A and system B pressure is not available. The secondary flight controls, high list devices consisting of trailing edge flap and leading edge flaps and slats are powered by hydraulic system B. And you can see them here. Here we have the trailing edge flaps, Leading edge flaps, leading edge slats. In the event hydraulic system B fails, the trailing edge flaps can be operated electrically. Under certain conditions, the power transfer unit, or PTU, automatically powers the leading edge devices. They can also be extended using standby hydraulic pressure. And remember, guys, we talked about the hydraulic system a few weeks ago. Please feel free to click in the link above, so you can go there and review the entire system. The spoiler speed brake system is made up of flight and ground spoilers, as you can see here. The flight spoilers can move to aid the ailerons with roll control, or they can be used to slow the airplane. After landing, the ground spoilers deploy with the flight spoilers to slow the airplane, as you can see them here. High lift devices increase the wind area and change the shape to increase lift at low air speeds. These devices include two leading edge flaps located inboard of each engine, four leading edge slats located outboard of each engine, and inboard and outboard double slot flaps on the trailing edge of each wind. So you can see the leading edge slats here and the leading edge flaps, trailing edge flaps. And let's check this picture here to see how the leading edge flaps look. And here we have the double slot flaps on the trailing edge of each wing. Flap positions 1 through 15 supply increased lift with only a small change in drag. Flap positions more than 15 supply increased lift and drag to permit a slower approach speeds and better airplane control. The primary flight controls are supplied power by these hydraulic systems. System A, 
system B, and the standby system. And the secondary flight controls are powered by this. Number two, four, nine, 11 flight spoilers and ground spoilers by system A, leading edge flaps and slats by system B and standby system. Number three, five, eight, 10 flight spoilers, yaw damper and trailing edge flaps by system B. Now let's talk about the controls and indicators. We'll start with the flight control panel in the forward overhead panel. We have the flight control switches, three positions, a standby rotor activates a standby hydraulic system pump and opens a standby rotor shutoff valve to pressurize a standby rotor power control unit. In the off position, closes flight control shutoff valve, isolating ailerons, elevators, and rotor from associated hydraulic system pressure. On is the guarded position and that's the normal operating position. Number two, we have the low pressure uh, lights for the flight control. Illuminated amber indicates low hydraulic system A or B pressure to ailerons, elevator, and rotor. The activated, when associated flight control switch is positioned to a standby rotor and a standby rotor shut off valve opens. Number three uses flight spoiler switches on Guarded position, that's the normal operating position. In off, closes the respective fly spoiler shutoff valve. Note, used for maintenance purposes only. Number four, we have the yaw damper light. Illuminated amber, yaw damper is not engaged. Yaw damper switch, in off, disengages yaw damper. On, engages main yaw damper to main rotor power control unit if the B flight control switch is in the on position. Engages standby yaw damper to standby rotor power control unit if both the A and B flight control switches are in the standby rotor position. Now we have the standby hydraulic lights, standby hydraulic low quantity light, Illuminated amber indicates low quantity in a standby hydraulic reservoir is always armed. The standby hydraulic low pressure light, illuminated amber, indicates output pressure of standby pump is low. Armed only when standby pump operation has been selected or automatic standby function is activated. The standby rotor on light Illuminated amber indicates the standby rotor system is commanded on to pressurize the standby rotor power control unit. The alternate flaps master switch, it has two positions, off, guarded position, that's the normal operating position, arm, closes trailing edge flap bypass valve, activates standby pump, and arms the alternate flaps position switch. The alternate flap position switch here functions only when the alternate flaps master switch is in the arm position. In up, electrically retracts trailing edge flaps. Leading edge devices remain extended and cannot be retracted by the alternate flap system. Off is the normal operating position in down, spring loaded to off, if we press it momentary, fully extends leading edge devices using standby hydraulic pressure. If we hold it, electrically extends trailing edge flaps until released. Field differential pressure light armed when the trailing edge flaps are up or down, illuminated amber, indicates excessive differential pressure in the elevator field computer. Note, excessive differential pressure can be caused by erroneous activation of the elevator field shift module. The speed trim fail light, illuminated amber, indicates failure of the speed trim system. Indicates failure of a single FCC channel when master caution light recall is activated and light extinguishes when master caution system is reset. The MAC trim fail light, 
illuminated amber indicates failure of the MAC trim system. Indicates failure of a single FCC channel when master caution light recall is activated and light extinguishes when master caution system is reset. The auto slat fail light, illuminated amber, indicates failure of the auto slat system. Indicates failure of a single stall management yield damper SMYD computer when illuminated during master caution recall and extinguishes when master caution system is reset. The stabilizer. Number one, we have the stabilizer trim wheel. This is located in the control stand. It provides for manual operation of stabilizer, overrides any other stabilizer trim inputs, rotates when stabilizer is in motion. Note, handle should be folded inside the stabilizer trim wheel for normal operations, this handle here. Otherwise, it could cause damage to your knees or your hands. Number two, we have the stabilizer trim indicator. Indicates units of airplane trim on the adjacent scale. Number three, stabilizer trim green band range corresponds to allowable range of trim settings for takeoff. Now we have the stabilizer trim switches spring loaded to neutral. They are located in the control wheel. Push both electrically commands the stabilizer trim in the side direction. Autopilot disengages if engaged. Number five, we have the stabilizer trim main electric cutout switch. In the normal position, this is a normal operating position, cut out the activate stabilizer trim switch operation. Now the stabilizer trim autopilot cutout switch in the normal position, that's the normal operating position and cut out the activates autopilot stabilizer trim operation. Autopilot disengages if engaged. Number seven, in the aft electronic panel, we have the stabilizer trim override switch. In override, bypasses the control column actuated stabilizer trim cutout switches to restore power to the stabilizer trim switches. Norm, guard the position, normal operating position. And we have the stab out of trim light in the left forward panel. It operates only with autopilot engaged, remains extinguished with autopilot not engaged. When it is illuminated amber, stabilizer is not being properly trimmed by the autopilot system. At the cruise station, we have the rudder pedals. Push, controls rudder position, permits limited nose gear steering up to seven degrees each side of center. Then in the aft electronic panel, we have the rudder trim indicator. Indicates units of rudder trim. We have the rudder trim off flag, which is the number three here. Illuminated amber in view. Rudder trim indicator is inoperative. Number four is the rudder trim control. Spring loaded to neutral. Rotate electrically trims the rudder in the desired direction. The aileron elevator fly spoilers. Number one is the aileron trim indicator, which you can see here and where it's located, indicates units of aileron trim. Number two, in the aft electronic panel, we have the aileron trim switches, which are spring loaded to the neutral position. Movement of both switches repositions the aileron neutral control position. Number three, we have the control wheel, Rotate, operates ailerons and fly spoilers in desired direction. And number four, we have the control column. Push, pull, operates elevators in the desired direction. Movement opposing stabilizer trim stops electric trimming. Now we have the speed brakes. Number one is the speed brake lever. Down, detent. All flight and ground spoiler panels in fair position. Armed, automatic speed brake system armed. Upon touchdown, the speed brake lever moves to the up position and all flight and ground spoilers extend. Flight detent, here. All flight spoilers are extended to their maximum position for in-flight use. 
up, all flight and ground spoilers are extended to their maximum position for ground use. Number two is the speed brake arm light. And this light is deactivated when the speed brake lever is in the down position. Illuminated green indicates valid automatic speed brake system inputs. The speed brake do not arm light. Light deactivated when speed brake lever is in the down position. Illuminated amber indicates abnormal condition or test inputs to the automatic speed brake system or during landing indicates wheel speed has dropped below 60 knots and the speed brake lever is not in the down position. All right, now we have the speed brakes extended in the right forward panel. Illuminated amber in flight, the speed brake lever is beyond the arm position and trailing edge flaps extended more than flaps 10 or radio altitude is less than 800 feet. On the ground, the speed brake lever is in the down the tent and ground spoilers are not stowed. Note, on the ground, the speed brake's extended light does not illuminate when hydraulic system A pressure is less than 750 psi. Trailing edge flaps. Number one is the flap lever. Selects position of flap control valve, directing hydraulic pressure for flap drive unit. Position of the leading edge devices is determined by selecting trailing edge flap position. Flap lever positions 10, 15, 25, 30, and 40 arms the flap load relief system. Number two, we have the flap gates. Prevents inadvertent flap lever movement beyond position one to check flap position for one engine in operative go around. Position 15, to check flap position for normal go around. Number three, we have the flap position indicator. Indicates position of left and right trailing edge flaps. Provides trailing edge flaps asymmetry and skew indication. Number four, we have the flaps limit placard, which is located in the center forward panel. Indicates maximum speed for each flap setting. We have the leading edge devices. Number one, leading edge devices annunciator panel. And this panel is located in the aft overhead panel. Indicates position of individual leading edge flaps and slats. So if you see here closely, we see the leading edge devices. We see flaps, leading edge flaps here. One, two, three, and four. And we have the slats. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight. So again, uh, this panel indicates position of, of individual leading edge flaps and slats, extinguished related leading edge device retracted. Number two, we have the leading edge devices transit lights, illuminated amber related leading edge devices in transit. Number three, leading edge devices extended lights, illuminated green, related leading edge slat in extended intermediate position. Number four, leading edge devices full extended lights, illuminated green, illuminated green, related leading edge device fully extended. Number five, we have the leading edge annunciator panel test switch. If you press it, it tests all annunciator panel lights. Number six, we have the leading edge flaps transit lights, which is located in the center forward panel. Illuminated amber, any leading edge device in transit, any leading edge device not in program position with respect to trailing edge flaps, a leading edge uncommanded motion condition exists, two or more leading edge flaps or slats have moved away from their commanded position, during alternate flap extension until leading edge devices are fully extended and trailing edge flaps reach flaps 15. Note, light is inhibited during auto slat operation in flight. Number seven, leading edge flaps extended, light, illuminated green, 
all leading edge flaps extended and all leading edge slats in extended intermediate position. Trailing edge flap positions 1, 2, 5, 10, 15, and 25. All leading edge devices fully extended. Trailing edge flap positions 30 and 40. Okay, guys, with this one, we complete part one of the flight controls uh, systems uh, presentation. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you are not subscribed to my channel yet, please do it now. If you think these videos could be useful for somebody else, please share them. And that's going to help me a lot to grow the channel. Next week, we will continue with part two of flight control. Please stay tuned for that one. Until then, guys, take care and hope to see you soon.